Welcome to our lecture online. So now let's take a look at the major features, surface features of the planet Mars. So what do we see at the large scale? Well, some very interesting terrain. First of all, Mars is kind of divided into two regions. We have the northern region and the southern region. Of course, we have some boundaries that are not straight across. But by and large, the elevation at the northern region is much, much uh, smaller or lower than the elevation of the bottom region. Also, the bottom region tends to be much more scattered uh, or scarred, I should say, with craters. So many more craters on this region than on this region. There are theories that perhaps Mars was hit by something very large that obliterated the northern end and then reformed and therefore shows of far fewer craters in this region than in this region. Also, theory is that this may have been covered by an ocean at the very beginning of the existence of Mars, thus sparing it from the bombardment of the land area that was on the southern part of the planet. So there's different theories as to what may have happened as to why there's such a large difference between the northern region and the southern region. It does turn out that both the northern, the northern region and the southern region does have a polar cap that contains both water ice and carbon dioxide ice. They believe that the northern polar cap contains more of the water ice than the southern cap, but that still needs to be decided for sure. Then there's some other very major things that we see on the planet. The one that's probably the most prominent is this region right here. This is an enormous depression a very big crater, so to speak, that goes six miles lower than the surrounding area. So six miles, that's 30,000 feet, or about 10 kilometers down from the rest of the elevation around it. So we believe that Mars was hit by a very large object, making this enormous basin called Hellas Basin. Then around it, there is a, a region that's then called Hellas Planitia. Planitia means plain, so they named it after that impact zone, or at least what we believe to be an impact zone. Then to the left of that, we have Argyre Planitia, or Argyre Planitia. Now, even though they call it a plain, this looks very much like another very large impact region, not quite as big as Hellas Basin, not quite as deep as Hellas Basin, but nevertheless, because of differentiation, all the region around it is much higher in elevation than this particular region right there. We do believe that's probably also an impact zone. Then over here, we have the highlands of Mars. This is known as the Tarsus Highland. I drew an arrow there because there's so much going on in here, but this whole region is about 10 kilometers or six miles higher than the typical elevation of Mars around it. So this is a huge elevated region. On that elevated region, we find three very large shield volcanoes in a perfect row. Then we have another very large plain volcano just outside the Tarsus region named Olympus Mons. Now this particular volcano, it's a huge mountain, is the tallest mountain in the solar system, estimated to be about 16 miles high, 16 miles, which is enormous distance, about 80,000 feet. The base of that mountain is as large as the state of, of Montana, and at the very top there's a crater that's 50 miles or 80 kilometers across. Imagine a volcano crater that's 80 kilometers across, a huge mountain named Olympus Mons. Then at the very tip of the Tarsus bulge, or Tarsus region right here, the highland, there's another large volcano right there. And right there where those three large shield volcanoes are, those are, this is where we have the highest region of the planet, and this is known as the Tarsus Highland. So in the, uh, I'm not the Tarsus Bulge, not the Highland. So the Highland is this entire region, and this smaller region that sticks up well above the rest of the Highland is called the Tarsus Bulge. Then there's a huge canyon that runs from the Tarsus Bulge all the way down to the low-lying region of northern Mars. This is a huge canyon, not unlike the Grand Canyon, but much larger in size. It's about 3,000 miles long and in some places 100 miles wide with walls that may be as high as 6 kilometers high. So 6,000 meters, well 6,000 meters, that would put it at about 20,000 feet of canyon walls, so well beyond the size of the Grand Canyon in all respects. It is longer, it is deeper, and it's wider. And we believe that back in the days that 
that Mars was a wetter environment with oceans and rain and rivers and so forth, that all the precipitation that deposits itself on the Tarsus highlands eventually made its way down, down some rivers, into the canyon, and over the millions and millions of years, perhaps for hundreds of millions of years, water continued to flow, carving out this enormous canyon. If we then go to the picture over here, it is the major feature that we see on this picture. Now, this is a composite picture taken by satellites that have gone around the planet numerous times. They piece all the pictures together, and you can clearly see this enormous valley, Val Marineris, which runs across the planet at, in the length of about 3,000 miles. That would be the distance from L.A. to New York, so to speak, and even beyond that. Some other interesting regions. We have what well, we have, the Arabia Terra. Terra stands for land, Arabia, so that's basically named out after Saudi Arabia, and same name at least, and so that's a, a region that is higher than the region below that. So I think we've covered just about everything. We have the Arjar Planet Planitia, we have the Hellas Basin, yes, and now one more, there's another very large volcano on this side called Elysium Mons, another very large volcano. Now, the reason why the volcanoes are so large on Mars compared to the Earth is that there's not a lot of tectonic plate movement. So wherever there's a weak spot in the crust of the planet, whenever there's volcanic activity, that volcanic activity just continues and continues in the very same spot, growing and growing and growing the mountain from which the lava then flows. And so back in the days when the planet was still young and there was volcanic activity, those mountains grew to enormous size because they didn't move. The weak spot in the crust simply didn't move, and so you had this single of volcanoes growing to enormous size. We have a similar situation on the Earth. We have the Hawaiian Islands. However, there the difference is that the weak spot in the planet continues to move, and so a new island is formed every time the volcano, so to speak, moves, and we don't have a single large volcano that just stays in the very same place. Now, Mauna Kea, the volcano, the large volcano on the large island of Hawaii is very similar to these large plate volcanoes because when you measure the height from the very bottom of the ocean where the volcano starts all the way to the very top of the mountain which is 14,000 feet above sea level, that is a huge mountain as well. So it's not unlike the kind of mountains, the kind of volcanoes that we find on top of, um, of Mars. Uh, let's see, and another thing of note, notice that we marked some of the uh, some of the um, satellites that landed on the planet. We have uh, Viking 1 that landed very close to the, to the uh, three volcanoes here near the Tarsus bulge. We have uh, Viking 2 which landed in the lowlands here above Elysium Mons. We have Spirit. Matter of fact, we have a picture here that was, that was taken by the rover Spirit and that rover landed here near the Hellas Planitia. And then we have another one that landed not too far away from Valmarineris, also near the Tarsus Highland called the Pathfinder. So you can see that they've taken uh, rovers and landers that land in different locations on the planet to get kind of a, a view, kind of a feel of what the planet is like in different locations. So those are the major surface features on Mars. There's many of them. It's a very interesting planet. It's not obscured most of the time by clouds or by dust. Once in a while, there's a huge dust storm that does obscure the surface for a while. But by and large, there's some amazing features to be seen on the planet. And we'll dive into that a little bit deeper in the videos to come to take a close look at some of these surface features. And that is Mars on a grand scale. So yeah, it, it's the, the map is like a flat map that's kind of distorted near the top and near the bottom, just like what you see on Earth maps, where the, the southern polar cap seems so large compared to the rest of the world because it's kind of distorted. You know, it tends to come down to a point which we don't show on this map right here. Yeah. What's that little squiggly line across the middle? Uh, the squiggly line right here? Oh, this line right here? Yeah, so this region right here tends to be kind of a low-lying region on Mars where we, f where we believe that once upon a time that was covered with an ocean. And then here was the higher elevations of Mars that was never covered by an ocean. So there's, there's definitely a difference and the boundary lies somewhere around here where probably the sea level was once upon a time. Is that line actually visible like that? Or? 
<laughs> no, it's not really visible. So when you look at the map, the actual photographs, you can't see a line like that because you don't see the surface differentiation. But by using instruments to measure the elevation, there's a kind of a boundary region and elevation here where this is definitely a lower lying region and this is higher lying region on the planet. And so that's kind of the, what we believe the kind of zero elevation line is across the planet. So we think there were seas and oceans on this side and, and high land on this side. So unlike Earth that has oceans everywhere, there seems to be a one singular ocean here and there probably was a very big lake right here, potentially another lake right there when it was a wet planet. 